Previously on Wild Cards. I need to get off that boat and back to being a full-time detective. And you need to stay out of prison. The best way we do that is to keep our heads down and do as we're told. Think you can handle that? Absolutely. This is our first official shift together. You think all the notes walk on streets separately? Nice work, both of you. You hear that? He said both. If you couldn't be a cop, what would you be? Nothing. My dad raised me to be a cop. That's who I am. Building day. I didn't get the memo. Did you get the memo? Yeah, me neither. You don't even work here. Why would you get the memo? Oh, and the crowd goes wild! Lucky catch. <laughs> so, do I get a shirt? Uh, no. You see, Ellis here isn't exactly a team player. So. Oh, really? Well, he would be if he had a shirt. We have any more shirts? We don't have any more shirts. No. I still don't get how you're here. Don't think about it too much, okay? You'll strain yourself. Simmons, Yates, stop messing around. Go split the squad up into teams. And you two. Trust fall. Escape room. You know, we could really use shirts. Not for where you're going. You know Stanford Township? A little town out in wine country outside the city? That's it. Their local butcher's gone missing. I'm sure they have their own force, right? An entire force of two. And they both just went on their honeymoon. Together? So sweet. I assured the commissioner we'd be happy to step in and help. So go help. Y if we find the butcher, do we get shirts? No. Don't make this any worse than it already is, OK? What are you doing? What? We're a team. We need building. Okay, what is your earliest childhood memory? I'm not playing this game. Do you consider yourself a masterpiece or a work in progress? <laughs> Anybody who considers themselves a masterpiece is not somebody you want on your team. Fair enough. Okay, if you could have any superpower, what would it be? That's easy. The power to get out of this conversation. Captain Avoidance, superpower, deflection. We need to focus on him, okay? Okay. Lucas Mays, 34, no priors, volunteers for the elderly, coaches Little League, and he looks like a Hemsworth. Ellis, we have got to find this man. Oh, now you're focused. Well, what if he's wandering the woods, lost with sunlight glistening off his cap? Okay, we're here. Something about these small towns, you know? It's like a Norman Rockwell painting. Have you ever looked at those paintings? Decidedly creepy. Thor lives in a trailer? Kidding me? It's not just a trailer. It's a classic silver bullet. First classic lack of commitment? Any guy who lives in a house on wheels is usually looking for a quick exit. Lucas Mays? Police, anybody home? Looks like things just went from Norman Rockwell to Norman Bates. Everything else looks pretty untouched. No sign of a struggle. Tell that to the previous owners of those. They're not human. Cow or deer would be my guess. Anything some butcher or hunter would have access to. <sighs> All those abs and he does? Too bad he's a psychopath. I don't think he did this. I'm gonna get forensics to get some blood samples, and then I need to track down whoever saw Lucas last. Uh-uh-uh, we need to track down. There's no I in team. Yeah, but there is an infuriating. Actually, there's three eyes. But who's counting? 
One of Lucas's employees called in a missing persons report, hoping we can shed some light on the- Look, the Welcome Center. You know who works at Welcome Centers? People who like talking to people. And people who like talking to people know all the hot goss. So much for teamwork. What is happening? Hurry up, where's my food? Honestly, Daryl, this bacon is all fat. I'm sorry, but like... This is mutton, not lamb. Where's Lucas? Hi, uh, I'm gonna need to speak with you privately. Everybody, this is now a police investigation. I'm gonna need you to clear out, okay? Everybody move. Let's go. Thank you. All right, you filed the missing persons report? Lucas didn't show up for work yesterday. And like, he didn't open the shop this morning either. You didn't think to check his place? Dude's not answering his phone. He's not gonna answer his door. I've been looking for a special dry rub recipe all night. Mrs. Gaskill out there ordered ribs for her daughter's birthday. What the heck am I gonna rub her okay. ribs with now? Take a deep breath. Did Lucas ever bail on you like this before? No way. That's why I got freaked, man. He's never even missed a day. Was Lucas into anything weird or strange? He's into farm to table and nose to tail and, and beer. He likes beer. Did he have any enemies? No way. He grew up here, took over the shop from his dad. He even gave me a job when I got fired from the FUD shop. The guy even makes his own deliveries. Like, in person. Oh, yeah. Our van's missing, too. OK, well, I'm going to need the license plate to that van and a list of all the deliveries that Lucas made on his last day, all right? You, you got it, officer. Can I be honest? <laughs> Purple is step you. <laughs> you too, sweet. Are you in town for our, our wine fest? That's one of the reasons. I don't mean to snoop, but that bike would save my life when my ex ran out on me. Yeah, um, the, the heart chakra affirmations are helping, but if I'm honest, it's my fault. I never learn. Listen, I don't usually tell people this, but I can read auras. And yours is like this brilliant pink. And I don't know, is it like an indigo? Really? Yes. You're loving, caring, empathetic. You're the total package. You're not the problem. It's them. Wow. Uh, thank you. Can I ask you a question? Your hunky butcher is burning up the socials. I hear he's gone AWOL. What? I have no idea. Weird, right? Do you know him? Yeah, everybody knows everybody around here. But are you are you sure he's missing? I made a special trip for his Insta-famous sausage rolls. They are delicious. But if you will excuse me, I have a ton of work to do. Feel free to help yourself to a brochure. Hey. Grape Lady was definitely sleeping with Lucas, but I don't think it ended well. She told you that? She didn't have to. She's realigning her heart chakras. And every time she talked about him, she played with her hair. Textbook tell. Lucas's van's missing, too. I just put out a bolo. And I got a list of all of Lucas's deliveries the day he disappeared. His last stop was at a restaurant named Trulici at the local winery. Shut up. Check out this graphic. It has the same stick pickers in the background. Just like the ones we found on Lucas's trailer. Look at us. Two investigators coming to the same conclusion. Two minds thinking as one. Otherwise known as... Coincidence. Teamwork. Synchronicity. Kismet? You hear about Lucas? What makes you say that? It's a small town. News travels fast. No, I said Julian. A baby with a chainsaw could have done better than this. Start over. Now! The day Lucas disappeared, your restaurant was his last stop. Well, you're more than welcome to look around, but unless he's in the walk-in fridge, you're not concerned he's missing? He's a grown man. I'm not his keeper. Anybody who might have had it in for Lucas? Everyone loves Lucas. Everyone. We well, saw some stick figures that were very similar to these in Lucas's trailer. Oh, it's just local superstition. The totems represent the harvest blessing. It's total nonsense, but you know, the tourists eat it up. Siobhan, Siobhan, what in the world are you thinking? We will talk about this later. I am prepping the lunch rush. No, we'll talk now. 
You turned the restaurant vegetarian without consulting me? I've gone off meat. But what even is celiac, carpaccio, and kohlrabi sorbet? It's celeriac and kohlrabi. They're vegetables. Keep up. What kind of wine am I supposed to pair with that? I don't know, Harlan, okay? Put the regular menu back, or you no longer have a job. Carpaccio? You are? Harlan Stanford. Like the town? Yes, my grandfather founded the town, and my father founded the winery. We're investigating the disappearance of Lucas Mays. When was the last time you saw him? Uh, a week or so ago, but the chef deals with all the food deliveries, so you should ask her while she still has a job. You don't really think he'd fire you, do you? You know, in high school, Harlan was a rich, entitled little prick. And that hasn't changed. <laughs> so when did you switch to vegetarian? A couple days ago. So right after Lucas's last delivery? Yeah, I told him that I was canceling our account. How did he react to that? Well, he wasn't thrilled. We are all eating too much meat. Meat, meat, meat. It couldn't go on forever. I mean, it had to stop. Oh. <sighs> Idiot. Th thanks for your time. Go Lucas. First Mona than the hot chef in town? There's definitely a history there. I mean, you saw the way she was punching that dough every time she talked about him. I think that Lucas was playing hide the kielbasa with Siobhan. Not anymore. Hey, look. This bottle from 1922 sold to a collector for 50 grand. Don't get any ideas. When my father first started this winery, it was on a humble three acres, small store. But thanks to the support of this incredible community and maybe a little business brilliance on my behalf. <laughs> oh, it's all right, it's okay. The Stanford Winery can proudly say we have over 100 acres of vines, an award-winning restaurant, and are currently being sold across North America. What's more, today, I'm excited to announce our own recently discovered vintage wine, unseen by human eyes for almost 100 years. And now, uh, you'll please Excuse me. Enjoy. I would like you to remember we sell by the case and drink up. Pam, Pam, do not put these up here. Wow, small town, big drama. Have you seen my wolf? Her, her name's Tala. She's a gray timber wolf. Um, Pam. Somehow she got loose. Pam. You see Pam. Hi. How you doing? You're scaring the clientele. You can't tape these up. It's private property. Hey, is there a problem here? Yes, this woman is trespassing. Please arrest her. Shut it, Harlan. I run the wolf rescue next door. And one of your wolves is missing? She's not just missing. She vanished. I can't understand how. Look, just because you can't control your animals is no reason to scare my clientele. You know how important wine fest is this town. So if I do see your damn wolf, I'm going to... What the heck was that? Bird cannon. They're shooting birds out of a cannon? Is that like a small town thing? No, it's a noisemaker to keep the birds away from the grapes. It usually goes off a couple times a day. Well, how come it isn't scaring off those birds? Red-tailed hawks? They're probably circling prey. Tala. Success by all means. Anyone else getting creepy Red Riding Hood vibes? Wolves don't usually attack unless provoked, and carrion birds, they wouldn't fly that close to the wolves. They must have found something big. Wow, your Discovery Channel subscription is really paying off. I like to leave the TV on for the cat, you know? He likes those animal documentaries. I'm sure Mark really appreciates it. Stay back. Hold on a sec. What is it? No! There's no way my wolves did this. They know Lucas. He was a kind, wonderful... I can't believe... We'll find whoever did this. You go back to the house. We'll join you in a minute. You can't say that. Say what? I promise we're gonna catch the bad guys? You can't say that. Someone she knows was gruesomely mauled. What was I supposed to say? Cops can't make guarantees like that, Max. Plus, Pam could be the murderer for all we know. Pam? No. What you looking at? Not much. Selfing for some footprints, but not in this grass. It's hardly any blood either. 
How does someone get ripped to shreds and not bleed? When someone's killed, they only keep bleeding so long as their heart keeps pumping. So Lucas was dead by the time the wolves got to him. Which means this missing person's case just became a murder. And wine festers are headed to a town where a killer and a wolf is on the loose. Exactly, so we need to act fast. I think he was killed somewhere else and then dumped here. Ew. Do you think the murderers were hoping the wolves would finish off their dirty work? Maybe, but it doesn't make any sense. There's high fencing all around the property, so how did Lucas's body appear and a wolf disappear all from within a secure facility? Unless... What? Lucas was the wolf. Okay, you're not helping. All my wolves are chips, so I can track them. And they're all accounted for, except for... Tala. Her tracker's disappearing and reappearing constantly. How's that possible? I've walked the grounds. There's no gap in the fencing. The gates are secure. One minute she was there, the next gone. Have you known Lucas for long? We went to high school together. We didn't really travel in the same circles. You know, he was handsome, star jock, prom king. Let me guess, you were the shy, nerdy kid who would rather hang out with animals over people. Does it still show? You were well. Talk to me about after graduation. I left town for college, studied zoology, and became fascinated with wolves. Last year, I inherited this land and decided to move back and open the sanctuary. And you said your wolves were familiar with Lucas? They knew him? He made deliveries a couple times a week, so they got to know the sound of his van. He'd always drop the meat off here with me. He never went out into the property. Certainly not by himself. It's just not fair. Lucas was one of the good guys, and they are few and far between. When was the last time you saw him? The day he disappeared. He swung by with my delivery, but when he heard that Tala was missing, he said he would help find her. That's the wolf tracker. Let me guess, you think Pam was sleeping with Lucas too? There was definitely something somewhere in there. She's back. Tal is back. Where? Outside the sanctuary. Tala! So we're wolf hunters now? I just need to confirm her story. She disappeared again. I don't understand. She was heading in this direction, right? That's Lucas's van. Do you smell that? Yeah, it's hard not to. Tiny hearts? Chicken hearts. Catching on to a theme here. But who would buy a box of chicken hearts? Somebody named Peter Milford at 435 West Valley Lane. A guy so into hearts, maybe he's the one that put them in Lucas's trailer. I, I used the hearts in my dissection class. It makes me glad I was homeschooled. <laughs> How well did you know Lucas Mays? Uh, we, we grew up here. Went to the school together, class of 2009. I couldn't believe it when I heard about his murder. Who said it was a murder? Oh, well, I, everybody was talking about the body. I, right. Small town. I, I just assumed that it was, you know. You, you want to open up a window? You're just looking a little hot. <laughs> I'm fine. But I, I do have a parent-teacher meeting I should get to, so. Right, well, we won't take up too much more of your time. Can you think of anyone who'd want to harm Lucas? No. I mean, when I heard the body was found on Pam's land, I... Well, you, you don't think she... Do you? What? No, we, we were all kids together. Um, Pam was a bit of a loner back in school. We didn't really hang out much. But I, I know she tutored Lucas in math. Um, if you'll excuse me, I really should get to that meeting. You, you can see yourselves out. Sure. Thanks for your time. Mm -hmm. Call me crazy. You say that like it's supposed to be a leap of logic. You saw the way he was cleaning his glasses every time we talked about Lucas. Maybe he's just nervous because he's the one who killed him. Or maybe he was hiding another secret. Such as? Mona from the Welcome Center, Siobhan, the winery chef, and Peter, hunky science school teacher. I think they were all getting a piece of grade A Lucas. I mean, look at them all here rocking those hot Y2K looks. <laughs> all except for Pam, who is clearly marching to the beat of her own drum. I don't trust him. Come on, grab the book. Let's go. Parent-teacher meeting. You really buy that? Nope. His hand was shaking too much. What the? Someone broke into my truck. 
My bag is missing. And my shawl and my hat. So is my uniform. Hey, that's Peter. Paul lost his parent-teacher meeting is a mobile one. I think we got ghosted. You gonna pull him over? No. I wanna see where he's going. I wonder where you were like in high school. Quarterback, unexpected drama club star. You just keep on poking the bear, don't you? It's either that or we play I Spy. I was a regular kid, Max. Average grades, nothing special. Boring. Yeah, boring, exactly. And you? I didn't go to school. Never? We were always on the move. Paris, Lisbon, Barcelona, Pine Bluff, Arkansas. That was a tough year. So you grew up on the run, huh? We weren't running from anybody. We moved because we wanted to. New languages, cultures. How many kids get that chance? I learned more than I ever would have in school. Like how to pick a lock in seven languages? May we. gonna be one of those couples who get out of their car on a deserted country road in the night and chase a chicken heart freak into the woods? Here, take this. Why, yes, Max. Yes, we are. Okay, perfect. What's next? Going down into a dark basement to check on the fuse box? Quiet. Ignoring that creepy doll with the eyes that follow you? Shh. Listen. What's that? You hear that? It's chanting. Yes, that's definitely chanting. And this is me, definitely leaving. Wait, come on. Look, there's smoke up ahead. I know what they say. Where there's smoke, there's... A ritual sacrifice. Wait a minute. Those... Those are our clothes. It's us. They're burning us. Seal the truth of our dark deed. The eyes pass them. Seal the truth of our dark deed. The crying eyes pass them. We, uh, we did it. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. Are you saying that the three of you killed Lucas Mays and then dragged his body into the wolf rescue? What? We were all in love with him. So when you found out he was sleeping with other people, you all decided to kill him? No, no, we all knew. But you all knew that you were all sleeping with him? Yeah, it, it's not the 90s. Ethical non-monogamy is the norm now. Maybe I do like this town. But then a few days ago, things changed. Out of the blue, he told us he couldn't be with us anymore. He said he'd met someone. Someone he loved. Someone he wanted to be monogamous with. And he wouldn't tell us who, only that being with any of us would betray his feelings for them. We never meant to hurt Lucas. We, we never, ever would. I, mean, I, I was happy that he found that kind of love. But you wanted it for yourself. Yes, but love is wanting what's best for someone. Still, it, it hurt, and we needed to find a way to move on, and, and so we... So we turned to... Witchcraft? Uh, Mona and Peter and I have been in a coven for years. Maybe I love this town, but we would never use it for evil. We cast a spell to banish him from our hearts, not to hurt him. So the three of you set up that altar in Lucas's trailer, is that right? Three hearts for the ones that he shattered. But then he went missing. And when you found his body, we knew. Our spell, it, it backfired. We didn't banish Lucas from our hearts. We banished him from the face of the earth. All right, so this 
spell he performed in the woods. Why did you need to steal our clothes? Oh, that was just a protection spell to, to stop you from figuring out what we did. Let prying eyes pay us no heed. Excuse me. Hypothetically speaking, how does one join a coven? All right, what do you got? Pathology results. Your victim died from a gunshot wound through the heart approximately three days ago. Bullet went right through him. And that's not all. He had some black powder on his clothes. Modern bullets don't leave that kind of residue. It must have been an old gun. Very old. Probably an antique. All right, well, their alibis check out. They were working the high school carnival the entire day and night of the murder. So golden boy Lucas starts a new relationship and winds up dead. Maybe there's a jealous ex that we didn't notice, or maybe his new lover turned out to be dangerous. We still don't know how Lucas or the wolf got in and out of the property. Oh, hey, reception called. They got a couple witnesses downstairs that want to come forward for your case. Great. Who? Oh, um, an old guy named Dumbledore and a small child with a little wand named Potter. Very funny. Chapter 8 of the team building manual. Just drop it, Max. The struggle of one? is a struggle of the entire team. Yeah, we're not the ones struggling. Your best suspects so far have been witches. You guys are making this entire station look like a circus. He is busy trying to solve a murder. What are you two doing? Oh, he's got himself a cheerleader. Come on, let's get out of here. Go team. You have so much discipline. I don't know how you do it. It's not healthy to keep all this anger in you. And you should be angry, OK? Let's do some role playing. Not the sexy kind, the therapy kind. I'll be Yates, and you'll be you. And go. And stop. Come on. We can't take that. It's us against them. No, there's no us, OK? We're not partners. We're not a team. And, and right now, we're nowhere on this case. All right? Nowhere. I guess you're right. I'll see you in the morning. Fensic sent us Lucas's belongings. Thanks. Say hi to Sam for me, okay? secret here you said you were fine that's your tell for not okay now dish just pretend we're back on the Cote d'Azur and you're crying about little Francois and how he broke your heart <laughs> he was so cute I'm all ears there's someone at the door I got 15 more minutes I'll be fine I gotta go I love you I love you New mansion, huh? Variety is the spice of life. Can I come in? Sure. Wait, wait, wait. I'm assuming this gesture is your unspoken apology, or am I totally off base and you just came here to snap me again? No. No, I'm not totally off base, or no, this isn't your unspoken apology. Please stop talking. The first one. I'm sorry I snapped at you, all right? Apology accepted. You hungry? I could eat. So, I was looking through Lucas's belongings and you... My God, that's amazing. I came up with a recipe a few years ago. I snuck into the VIP lounge at a Harry Styles concert. A few hours later, 
I was on a long haul flight on his private jet cooking for the whole crew. You know, a song Adore You was written about this very grilled cheese. Look, I'm sorry you were right. I know you have a lot of history with those guys and a lot of stuff going on inside that I don't know about and you don't have to tell me about it. I'll just be more mindful the next time. She's such a colossal jerk. Look at this. Found it in Lucas's belongings. He was carrying it around in his wallet. Lucas kept one half in his wallet. Why do you have the other half of this wishbone? It's hard to grow up in a small town. You get labeled early on, and that's who you are and always will be. I went to school with Lucas since the first grade, and I don't think we ever spoke until I was assigned to tutor him in senior year. I think I know where this is going. Of course I fell for him. He was kind, sweet, and so much smarter than he was ever given credit for. The night before I left for college, I found a love letter with one half of a wishbone that he'd left for me. It said that if I felt the same way he did, then I should meet him at midnight in the middle of town square. This is like the best John Hughes movie ever. I went there and I waited for hours. And he never showed up. Scratch that's like the worst John Hughes movie ever. When I moved back over a decade later, he showed up at my door and apologized. He said he got scared. Scared of what? I didn't think he was smart enough or good enough for me. I was leaving to do all these things and he was going to work in his dad's butcher shop. We started talking every time he came by. And it was just like old times. We spent over a decade apart because we were scared to talk. If we'd just been honest with each other. Is that your wolf tracker? That's not possible. What? Tal is back in the sanctuary. She's here. What? How did she get back inside? Hi, baby girl. There's a tunnel. I've never seen that before. That's how Tala got in and out of the sanctuary. She was the tutor way through. That's how the murderer dragged in Lucas's body without getting caught. Please don't tell me we're going inside. Well, we're going in. Creepy, drippy cave. Very apropos for murder, yes, but for once, can a crime take place in a bakery? Where even are we? I guess these are old rum running tunnels. They used to smuggle booze in Prohibition. No signal. Hey, look at this. Animal prints. Wolf tracks. Tella. Hey, do you remember when Tella's signal kept disappearing? She was probably running in and out of these tunnels. Darkness, so not my old friend. Hey, look. <laughs> wow. We must be under Harlan's Vineyard now. Bordeaux Grand Cru, 1922. This bottle is a real deal. Oh, yeah? How can you be so sure? Paper is the hardest thing to counterfeit. I don't think any of these have ever been used. Yeah, these are all clean. Oh, my Merlot. What? I think Harlan is filling these with boxed wine. A little cardboard dough, if you will. Corking it and selling it for 50 grand. That's exactly what he's doing. It's genius. No, it's fraud. Fine, fraudulent genius. OK, so if Pam's wolf, Tala, found this tunnel, I bet Lucas did too. And that's when he caught Harlan in the act. Why murder someone over a $50,000 bottle of wine? You mean a $50,000 counterfeit scheme? It's a federal crime. That's just for one bottle. He gets caught doing this, it's an end to that money train, not to mention it's a pretty serious jail time. 
Picture it. Harlan's a legacy kid who runs this town. Everything in it bears his name. One wrong move, and his name would be forever tainted. I mean, you get it. You're a legacy kid. No, I'm not. Your dad's a cop. You're a cop. I mean, isn't part of the reason you want your desk back to restore your family name? OK, look, we have a theory, all right? But not a bullet, a crime scene, or anything that suggests Harlan saw Lucas the night of the murder. OK, here's a thought. I get out of this creepy, gross, bad tunnel. Really? Let me finish, and then I'll go call for backup and keep an eye on Harlan. Well, I look for the bullet and anything that can tie Harlan to Lucas's murder. See? The team is built. We're like one machine, like Rapino and Morgan. Who? Do you not watch women's soccer? OK, look, just be careful. Any backup's at least an hour away. We got a big cheese. Gates, enough for the Sabrina jokes, OK? The moment's passed. We need backup, so floor it. And when I added a restaurant and elongated the cellar, I made a fascinating discovery. A Prohibition-era cache of vintage wine, almost 100 years old. You know what that son of a bitch did? Harlan? What? He fired me. I'm so sorry. That's long overdue. I'm actually kind of relieved. When it comes down to it, I have given this place the best years of my life. And what did I get in return? Besides calluses, back pain, and mild drinking problem. I'm sure. And I've always wanted to leave this small town and open my own shop. Because now I don't have an excuse. Good for you. You know what I think I'm going to call it? Siobhan's. That has a nice ring to it. Thank you. G damn it. Look, okay. I gotta go. Um, text me for the grand opening. OK. okay. Do you know where Harlan is? I, I need to talk to him. You had to get something from the basement. Everyone, the wine tour will be starting in just a Prosecco. Like, just a second, but with Prosecco? I'm going to take a break. What are you doing here? Put your gun on the ground and kick it over. Slowly. That's it. What you doing? Just admiring your counterfeit operation. You got guess Lucas did too, and that's when you killed him, right? I offered to cut him in, but the idiot had morals and wouldn't bite. He left me no choice. It's always a choice, Arlen. This isn't just about the money, is it? It's about what happens if this winery goes down. We built an empire here. When your daddy built an empire, now you're about to lose it. A hit like that would be pretty devastating to your reputation. I'm the king of this city. People look up to me. For now. But your father was a true winemaker. He left you a legacy. He just turned this place into some tourist trap that sells cheap wine at a premium. You get caught with this counterfeit crap, you're done. That's never gonna happen. Even your gun's prohibition era. You sure that dusty old thing still shoots? OK. Yeah, that definitely shoots. Look, if you shoot me with that gun, Powder residue will match the wound on Lucas's body, not to mention the bullet in the barrel. Well, I'll just have to make sure they never find you. Don't do anything stupid, all right? I got backup on the way. Come on. We both know there's no backup. All right, right this way, folks. Watch your step, mind your neighbor, and check your attitudes at the door. And what do we have here? A recreation, no doubt of a very special event that happened at this very winery. OK, so hang back, people, and get your phones a rolling. You're definitely not going to want to miss this. The story of Yor begins as such. The youngest member of the most prominent family struggles to keep the business afloat. And spoiler alert, he sucks. So he fakes a buried treasure and makes a barrel of money until He's discovered by the local butcher, who's actually the town's most beloved son. Money usually gets him out of everything, but the butcher is a good, decent, hot, incorruptible man. Everything a loser's son is not, so the butcher has to die. You shut her up. 
Oh, believe me, I've tried. Harlan Stanford, you're under arrest for the murder of Lucas Mays. Turn around, put your hands behind your back. Now! We went over Harlan's financials. Turns out his vineyards were growing mostly spoiled crops over the years. Sounds like he was up to his ears in debt. Exactly, which is why he started selling these so-called vintage bottles every few months, just to keep the place afloat. It turns out it was just bad luck that Lucas found him out. The butcher was genuinely a good, decent guy. Not many of those left. Nope, there aren't. I got a meeting out of my office. So, what do you want to do to celebrate? Toilet paper, Gates' house? Mm. I'd save it for yourselves. Both your careers are getting flushed down the drain. Mm -hmm. Oh, she helped me catch a murderer today. What'd you do? She solved today's wordle. Oh. You hungry? I'm buying. I got it in four tries. The word was foyer. Probably could get that if you tried. Couldn't solve that. Couldn't solve that. Why don't you say it sooner? They're not even here anymore. Mm -hmm. They turned the corner. You're gonna have my back, have my back right away. It's not your grilled cheese, but it'll do. Nothing's like my grilled cheese. So, you said you moved around a lot growing up. It must have been hard to make friends. My parents are my friends. Okay, so if you didn't go to school and you didn't have any friends, what were you doing while your parents were out? Um... I was never alone. I played with Holly Golightly, John McClain, Sarah Connor. I sang with Mick and Keith, Salt and Pepper. <laughs> I hang out with Dawson, Pacey, Joey. Until things got weird, there was always so much drama. Yeah, but those aren't real people. They were to me. Sounds lonely. Sorry to hear that. I had a wonderful childhood. My folks were really great people. Do you really not see it? See what? Thanks. Your parents were criminals. They put you in a position where they could have been taken from you at any minute. That wasn't a normal childhood. My parents loved me. They gave me everything I needed. Like what? They taught me to never punch down never work a mark that wasn't deserved, and to always lend out my hand to anyone within reach. So don't tell me that my parents aren't good people. They taught me how to survive in a world where no one has your back unless they want something from you. We looked out for each other. We were a team. Well, I'm glad you're on mine today. Thanks for having my back. I got you. So, since we're uh, temporarily teammates. That's a hard no. I'm not putting that on, ever. They're not giving us matching t-shirts. We gotta have our own swag. Just put it on once, I'll close my eyes. What? No, I'm not gonna put that on. What? Please. When did you even have time to do that? Partners in wine. Partners in crime. You're kidding, right? No, I don't do hats. I don't like it. They're so cute. It was expensive. Well, then you wasted your money. Okay, just keep it. You know, it'll grow on you. <laughs>